Alliance for the Brave, a program that advocates for our active military, veterans, and first responders. Presented by Gear Services Web Design. Alliance for the Brave, serving and empowering those who serve our great country and the line of duty. Tune in, join in, and plug in with us around the globe. Welcome to Alliance for the Brave. In the air everywhere across America, you're listening to Alliance for the Brave, where we bring education, information, and communication to today's veterans, active duty military, first responders, and American patriots who would join us. I'm Jim Blythe, a certified senior advisor, and in in a few minutes, we're going to have a very, very great friend of mine, Richard Canis, on the phone to be talking about what we do for kids, but I right now want to say a special prayer for protection over the people in Kentucky and Arkansas. A 200-mile-long tornado. The governor of Kentucky says they think it's between 75 and 100 people who lost their lives in Kentucky. So we just ask your prayer of protection and your, your help for all of those families up there, Lord, in Kentucky and Arkansas. Now, let's get back to the wonderful things we've got going on. I want to thank Colonel Richard Canis for being on board with me this morning. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, good morning. How are you doing? This is such a beautiful day. I'm good. It's another day in paradise. I know, I know, I know. Richard, you and I have gotten to know each other for about six years because you invited me to be part of a great organization called AUSA. It was it has been a great experience. The AUSA North Texas chapter, the Audie Murphy chapter, is one of the biggest in the nation, isn't it? It, it we are uh we are the largest geographic chapters within uh the Association of the United States Army because we go from Louisiana, Arkansas border to New Mexico and then from I twenty up to Oklahoma, so we got a lot of cows and scrub brush that we count as members. So, by God, we're counting them. <laughs> well, you you have been my inspiration. You have been a great leader in developing community relationships and developing programs that involve veterans. And one of the most fantastic things that you have taken charge of is our community salutes. So I yeah. want you to please explain to our audience, because we want to get everybody behind our community salutes. Yep. We want people to want to participate with donations, but be there for these kids. So, Colonel Canis, tell us about our community salutes. So our community salutes is a national organization of which the our community salutes DFW organization is a chapter of. Uh, we founded our chapter in uh, October of last year, uh, and um, but what the organization does on a national basis, it's the only organization that does a thank you event for high school graduating seniors who are enlisting in the service, which, you know, when you say that, you think, well, no, well, yeah, they, they do this. No, no. Most of the high school graduations will honor the, the kids that are going into the academies, you know, West Point, Annapolis, you know, the Air Force Academy and stuff like that. But they never thank the kids who are raising their right hands and swearing, you know, to defend the Constitution and defend our nation. So 12 years ago, Dr. Ken Hartman um, did, did a thank you event for his own hometown area in Pennsylvania. Uh, or pardon me, New Jersey, and um, it has now grown to about 60 chapters nationwide. And like I said, we we are uh, one of the newer ones, uh, and their plans are to, to open up another 30 chapters nationwide uh, over the next year. I, I think this is one of the most important things to go back. You are honoring high school graduates for those men and women, those young men and women who made the decision to go into the military and you're honoring them, you're making it special with a very special um, uh, ceremony. And last year we did one in Fort Worth and we did one here in Dallas. Now they are across the nation. You say there's 60 chapters that are doing this. Right. 
Tell us a little bit about that ceremony, what it looks like, and how people can go and attend it and get involved. So, you know, because of COVID, for a lot of times, you know, for a lot of the chapters, they had to do a virtual event where it no one showed up. We, you know, just, you know, for Dallas-Fort Worth, we're kind of a large metroplex. So our chapter, uh, all the, there's eight recruiting commands in our area. You know, the four, you know, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, Texas National Guard, Texas Air Guard, and now Space Command. That's, that's here. Every one of those recruiting commands in the Dallas-Fort Worth area is the largest recruiting command for their service, period. You wow. Know, so it's the, the Army recruiting, com- the Dallas recruiting command for the Army brings in almost 5,000 people a year. Now, just to give you that as a reference, the entire Coast Guard nationwide don't, doesn't bring in 5,000 people. So that's just a... Yeah, you know, a data point, but so so uh, a lot of them did virtual, some did in presence. We did a combination. We we had reached out to our recruiting commands and said, "Look, you know, would do we do a single event or do we do two? And they came back in unanimously. It's too large. The guys that are in Mansfield are not driving to Dallas to do an event. You know, they they just won't. You know, so and and for the recruiting commands, they're going up to, they're going down to Waco and they're going to Paris, Texas and Midland, Odessa, and they, I mean it's a large chunk of geographic space for them. So we do a, a Fort Worth event, and then we do a, a, a Dallas event. So um, the events are uh, historically weeknights, six thirty to eight. We're currently right now doing it, so it's about a ninety-minute timeline. Um, free to attend. Uh, we ask that you register so we know who's coming. And then depending on the, the venue, uh, whether it's uh, social distances or not, you know, we, we strongly encourage people to wear their masks. Uh, but uh, so historically, the events are a May-June timeline. That's when high school is graduating. That's the largest pool of kids going in, I should say young adults going into the services. Um, what we had been asked this August by the incoming new Army Recruiting Battalion Commander was that they actually have uh, two different timelines where they need help. And, and I'll digress a little bit to give you an idea of why our community salutes is needed. What we found out, if you... A recruiting command, the Navy recruiters have 100 young men and women under contract. The, even though they're signed up, ready to go, and, and ready to what I call get on the bus to go to their basic, they'll lose 10 to 20% of them just don't get on the bus. They just, just don't do it. they hesitant. The parents give them, you know, t- talk them out of it, stuff like that. Those who have attended an Our Community Salutes event that thanks them for what they're doing, reassures them that it is a proper decision, tells the parents that, hey, they're not by themselves when they go in because you have your local organizations here to help you as the family member in any questions you need while your son or daughter is going. They see between a 95 97% get on the bus rate. So for the recruiting commands, they love these events because it drives them on to their careers. So I, I think that's, that's outstanding. Yeah, that it, is outstanding. Show support yeah. to these kids so that we can help right. them and help the families. Now, what's the website and where can people go to register? And is there a donate button on there? there there's always a donate button when you're working with me. So when in doubt, <laughs> ABC, always be closing. So, so you can go to www.ocsdfwtx.org. Our community salutes DFW, Texas, ocsdfwtx.org. That gets you to our website. We have a second set of events uh, in, when we met in August. 
with the Army Recruiting Command, they have uh, uh, young adults that have graduated from high school already, but they're called delayed entry. They're not going to go in until January of the next year, February of the next year. So they're still home, they're doing their stuff, and they go away for Christmas, holidays, you know, the holiday season. And, you know, Uncle Ed talks them out of it. You know, when they're home, oh, you don't need to go. Yeah, don't go into the Navy. You know, they're going to make you want to swim. You know, so that's, you know, silly stuff like that. So they asked if we could do an Our Community Salutes in January. And, of course, our answer was absolutely. So we're going to have two events, January 13th. Our Richardson, our Dallas event will be at the uh, Heights Church in Richardson at uh, uh, 201 uh, West Renner Road, which is basically Central Expressway in Renner. Big church. We're inside the chapel. Oh, a huge uh, about, church, that's yeah. About a huge church. We're, we're the January events, uh, we will all expect that to be a smaller event. About 100 enlisted between all the services, two to 300 family members. You know, so that's what we think our January events are. Our May events, uh, so the 13th is, is Richardson. The 14th is uh, our Fort Worth event at the I.M. Carroll Academy for STEM, and uh, that's within the Fort Worth ISD. Huge, that's their big performing arts facility that holds 1,500 people. Uh, and, and at the same time for both of our events, we will be broadcasting this live uh, you know, it'll be a Facebook live event or it'll be a Zoom event so that grandma and grandpa that's in Delight, Arkansas, they can see their grandson or granddaughter being honored. So that's kind of the, like I said, that's the flow of January this year. And May, uh, we're going to have it the 10th. It will be our Fort Worth event. And the 11th will be our uh, Dallas event both at the same locations, Heights Church for the Richardson area and in the I am Carroll facility for uh, uh, the Fort Worth one. So, well, let's repeat yeah. that, Rich, for uh, people so that they can write it down. The Our Community Salutes events are going to be twice this year. They're going to be in January, on January 13th, and on January 14th in Fort Worth. And January 13th, it's the Heights church on 201 west renner road which is the corner of central expressway and renner road in richardson the other one is at the uh i am carol I, center in i am carol peril yeah i am carol academy for stem all right yeah and that's their big stem i am carol like you know the the road t-e-r-r-e-l-l um and um yeah, you know, it's a, it's pomp and ceremonies. It's it's you know the Fort Worth ISD Color Guard will be presenting colors. You know for the Fort Worth one, the Richardson Berkner High School Color Guard will be presenting. We have uh, one of our Miss Texas, uh, Miss Outstanding Teen Texas, uh, will be singing our national anthems. Uh, Doctor Hartman's coming in himself for the Dallas event uh, that's in Richardson and. Um, you know, we, we will have public service announcements, you know, videos of, from uh, Medal of Honor recipients, uh, the CEO of the Medal of Honor Museum. Uh, we will have um, former uh, Sergeant Majors of the Army, Dan Daly, will be speaking. So, I mean, a lot of people that are, you know, telling them, hey, this is the right decision. This is a good decision. This, this is, is a, a way for you to start your career and, and go forth and do good. This is a great decision. It was the best decision of my life when I did it, and I went into the service because it does so much. So when we come back from this break, Rich, we're going to be talking about what all this does for not only our community but for our young men and women. You're listening to Alliance for the Brave with Colonel Richard Canis and I talking about our community salutes. Again, go to... Our Community Salutes, we'll give you that when we come back. It's on Facebook. We'll be right back after these words. This is Alliance for the Brave.
business owner or IT director with a need for custom application development? Gear Services provides custom application development to fully utilize your corporate data. From online mapping applications to business intelligence dashboards, Gear Services designs online applications to help manage your business in a more effective manner. Our applications are used to manage assets around the workplace. Visit GEERServices.com. That's GEERServices.com. Or call 1-800-601-GEAR for more information about what Gear Services can do for your company. Hi, this You're listening to Alliance for the Brave, honoring, serving, and empowering those who serve our great country in the line of duty. Today's program is presented by Gear Services Web Design. Learn more about our mission and how you can plug in with us at allianceforthebrave.com. Now, back to the conversation. Welcome back. This is Jim Blythe, Certified Senior Advisor, U.S. Navy veteran, talking to the most tuned-in, plugged-in veteran <laughs> in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Colonel Richard Canis. Uh, Rich, okay, while we were on Facebook and not on the air, we made a bet. And so today is the Army-Navy game. I buy breakfast if Army wins. You buy breakfast if Navy wins. Done. Done. You know, easy peasy lemon squeezy. I I got to tell you though, I think the whole nation is winners on this deal, and especially our military. As we were talking about, these young men who are playing football are not going to professional careers for at least five or six, four or five or six years, like Roger Staubach did, who was one of the greatest all time NFL players. I mean, think right. about his leadership capacity was amazing and i think you got a lot of it from the navy but let's go back and again we want to promote our community salutes we're going to be doing two events this year the first one is going to be in january the 13th at the heights church to a one rest renter road that's renter in central the other one the 14th over in fort worth at the i am carol stem center you can look it up on our community salutes, better known as ocsdfwtx.org. And I got to tell you, these things cost money. We get a lot of help. So if you've got a small company and you're a veteran-owned business or you're a veteran or you want to be a patriot and you are supporting veterans, hit the donut button. No, wait a minute. Hit the, the yeah, the donate button. Donate. Yeah. You, you can tell I haven't had any breakfast yet, man. <laughs> I'll meet you up at the red truck. We, we can do the donut button. That's awesome. <laughs> Rich, I so thoroughly enjoyed last year being part of our first DFW, our community salutes. Um, it was, it was a great experience, and I took Diane with me. What attracted you? What got you involved in this? How did you find out about it? Well, the you know, I, I had met Dr. Hartman, you know, a couple of years prior to that just by happenstance. Uh, there, our San Antonio chapter, uh, which we are emulating, you know, has been doing this for 10-plus years. And uh, they had a 800-person formal sit-down event in San Antonio. They raised about seventy, eighty thousand dollars to have the event, and it was just dynamite. You know, Medal of Honor recipients, four stars, uni- all, all the flag officers you can see. You know, so that that was of interest to me. Met Dr. Hartman, and casually mentioned to him, I said, you know, do you have you briefed all the commanders? Uh, for the recruiting commands for the services. Well, it happened. So that's what you need to do. So he went and briefed all the four stars, well, pardon me, the two stars uh, (coughs) for the cadet command and their respective services plus the Coast Guard and showed them the statistics of driving the uh, enlistees or the poolies uh, to actually go to the basic course, which caused those two stars to go, "Uh uh-oh, we, this, we need to put the word out. So the Army two-star at the time, you know, just like anything else, it rolls downhill. They told all their brigade commanders, you make uh, an our community salute event in your areas, which they then went to their 
all the battalion commanders and the current battalion commander here in Dallas calls me up uh, and, and all my counterparts, you know, for the, the Air Force Association, the Navy Leagues, uh, you know, and, and the other services together in January of 2020 and said, hey, we need to set one of these up. But by law, active duty guys, we, we can't set it up because we're not allowed to ask for money because we're on active duty. So, as always, you know, everybody send there look, looking at their shoes and their, their <laughs> cell phones, you know, thinking, oh, I don't want to. And then, as always, the Army steps up and says, we're, we'll take it. So, well, I, I just want to say, know. because we got this Army-Navy <laughs> deal, you know, when you call me, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't look at my shoes. Man, no, no. I didn't look at my cell That's phone. It. I said, heck yeah. Let's All right. go. Let's go. Tell you what, let's do. Let's put this this ship back out to sea. We're going to go for a commercial break, and then we're going to be right back with Colonel Richard Canis. I want to talk more not only about our community salutes, but the importance of being involved, the importance of being part of the community of veterans that we serve. So this is Jim Blythe with Colonel Richard Canis, and we're here for you on Alliance for the Brave. Don't go away. We'll be right back. web design visit us on facebook or online at allianceforthebrave.com and now back to alliance for the brave well welcome back this is jim Blythe, u.s navy veteran joining me <clears throat> u.s army colonel veteran colonel richard canis by the way rich i'm glad that we made the bet on army navy about breakfast because i would have to if we did it where I had to buy you a bottle of scotch, then there's nothing because I can't drink anymore. So therefore, I'm on the short end of the stick getting a bottle of Dr. Pepper. I mean, wait a minute. No, no, no. I'd give you the bottle of scotch. You just donated it back to me. So oh, that's how oh okay. That's how we roll. But that's the breakfast work. How fun is that? <laughs> Rich, since I've you know, got, gotten to know you and gotten plugged in, I'm a member of AUSA. I'm on the board of Navy League. I find it so tremendously important, so enjoyable to be part of these organizations. I'm part of VFW. I'm a Vietnam veteran. These organizations do tremendous amount, just like our community salutes is honoring the young men and women going into the military. You have been so involved. Tell people a little bit more about your involvement, but I want to make a point of how important it is for veterans to get plugged in because too many veterans start isolating, and we don't need that. We need them to be a part of what we're doing. So, you know, the Association of the United States Army and our North Texas Audie Murphy chapter about – 12 years ago, 13 years ago, um, was a dying chapter. I'll be right up front. You know, it was old guys having lunch, telling war stories. And myself and my compatriot in crime, uh, Colonel J.P. Hogan, sat down at an IHOP uh, 12 years ago and said, we got to either change this organization or it will die under our presence. And we're not going to do that. So the organization at a national level has about 22, 23 programs that they want the chapters to, to support. You know, family readiness groups, the active duty army, the reserves, the guard, you know, just uh, wounded warriors, variety of different things. And each chapter tries to do them all, and they do them all poorly. What we did to the, the, at a national level was we told our national, we're not doing 22. We're focusing on three things. We do support for wounded warriors in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We teach leadership skills to the college-level ROTC cadets in initially our area. It's now in a six-state area, and we've set up a for-profit company to teach leadership skills to commercial companies, and actually we have a contract with the Air Force to teach leadership skills to the Air Force. So, And then we help uh, veterans uh, find jobs. That's it. That's all we're doing. Anything else is noise. So by focusing 
we became one of the best chapters within your state. We're about a 1,900-person uh, chapter now. Uh, now, a lot of it's virtual. You know, the guys, we've got guys and gals in Midland, Odessa, and Amarillo, and I, God bless them, but we support really Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, and, and then we do things. Uh, we have the largest golf tournament within the Army Association worldwide. We just had it in October. Uh, all the money that's raised in the, in the, uh, the stays in the area. And then we act like a foundation and then we donate funds to smaller veteran owned charities that either support wounded warrior causes, uh, give scholarships to, uh, uh army, uh, uh, children that are going to college. And uh, we also support the Reese Across America, Dallas, Fort Worth area with buying wreaths for our national cemetery that's here in Dallas, which we will be laying those wreaths next weekend. Yeah. So uh, that's what we do. All right, let's go back then, because one of the things that you donate, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm very involved with Colonel, Colonel Jeff Galt, and his Army Scholarship Foundation. They provide scholarships to a large number of young men and women, and I have helped them go through those qualifications and reading those essays. My goodness gracious. A lot of people don't realize how Army children go through so many schools because the command moves mom or dad, and basically they may go three years. Yeah. Yep. You yep. know, and so those kids are at a disadvantage, yet the Army Scholarship Foundation provides a scholarship which gives them impetus, gives them help. And by being vetted by Army Scholarship Foundation, all of a sudden they get other scholarships right. as well. And so that's a very, very important thing. You getting everybody together. You know, we have participated in in the golf tournament, I think every year since the last six right. years. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the Army Scholarship Foundation is a perfect example. It, you know, it's tied to our educational STEM focus that we're, we're now uh, focusing on as, as part of our uh, leadership skill sets. Is, is STEM is, is helping that. It ties into the recruiting command is helping drive STEM solution sets and um you know they've got no no paid staff you know they everything that is raised it, this is for children of soldiers and spouses of active duty enlisted soldiers for college level scholarships you know just last year uh they did 292 scholarships but they had almost 600 applicants so it's always about money they, they can only give out so much. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, it's they're they're high rated on GuideStar, Platinum Seal. They you know the, it's a great organization. You know they, but people don't know about it. So we help them when they're in June when they do their grading. You know we get together at the house and and go through the 600 plus applications and and like I said they they bring you to tears. Oh, you know, some of these young kids are, are God bless them, you know, but you know, we can only help so many. So the, the more you help, you know, the better. And this is the future of America or, and these young men and women have sets of values that have just been amazing for me to read all of these things, uh, and being in a military family. I think that's yep. incredible. So that's one thing you do. Getting everybody together. You say you put on, and I know I've been there, the largest golf tournament in the United States for the AUSA. That is such a fun deal. And all these guys come together. I mean, we start off with a breakfast of burritos in, in the cold, chilly morning air. And we get to watch the coyotes <laughs> run across the golf course. I'm not so kidding. Good. I'm not kidding. Diane and I are sitting there on a golf course. We're going to be judges of one of the holes. And here's this coyote comes across the golf course and sits down in the middle of the fairway. That's it. You know, he's, he's waiting for his burrito. And, you know, unless you don't deliver it to him, he makes him mad. Only, so, only in good. Texas. Only in Texas. Oh, I got to oh, tell you. Yeah, yeah. 
And one of the other but things that, yeah. that you and, and uh, J.P. Hogan, Colonel J.P. Hogan, you got asked by the Army Futures Command, and you're helping the Army Futures Command find new technology to implement in the military. Absolutely. And I think that's a huge deal. J.P. and I has come on with me several times, and we've talked about that, how they're looking for new technologies. And one of the problems is when in the past they got a technology, it would take seven, eight years for it to get implemented. Right. They're looking at being able to get new technologies implemented in less than a year. Yeah, in months. Months, you know? yeah. So, um, and, and once again, our support of the Futures Command, which is based in Austin, has been one where they know they can't find the people that have those inventions. We're the face of the Army in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And we're out in front of those commercial companies and these schools. And we need people that go, hey, I, I've got an invention that does this. And I'll give you a perfect example. So JP is doing some work in Frisco where he lives. And uh, he's at one of the high schools. And there's a young gentleman who has, uh, for a science project, invented a way to, to see through walls. And it's like, that's of interest. So we we introduced him to Futures Command. I mean, this is an 18-year-old kid, you know, who has doesn't even have a business, but he has the idea. They're funding him. There was another. There was another Crazy kid stuff. who figured out a way to take the kinetic energy of walking and put it into boots, so he could literally <laughs> create electricity Charge. by walking. That's right. And That's recharge a, batteries. All all simple things that help those soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. To, if you can eliminate batteries, that's 10 to 15 pounds a person, and that means you can carry more ammo or more water, or you're just not carrying batteries. So simple ideas, and then they, they mentor them with other groups that help them put together that business and put together the manufacturing of it and items like that and, and get it out into the warfighter's hands quicker. Now, I mean, those are, but, but we're just the eyes. So, yeah. you know, if that's of interest, you need to get in touch with us. Now, <clears throat> one of the other things that I'm a firm believer in is networking for business. Okay. Because yep. everybody, everybody gets out of the military. How long did you spend? You spent about, what, 25 years, 26 years? They, they threw me out after 30-plus. They said I got old and gray, and I was, and I am. So to get out, and I left. So I, I was just a, you know one of those lone guys that did 30. Oh, wow. Well, my grandfather did 32, but he was enlisted and an officer. And so right. m most people, unless they make flag rank, don't make it to 30. So congratulations. But right. when you get out, you're looking for a new career or you're looking for right. utilizing your skills. What better place to plug in and build relationships is in a veteran organization. And so I... Well. I want to Absolutely. really encourage young men and women or patriots who have young men and women in the military that are going to be coming out, get involved. Now, I'm Navy, but I'm involved with AUSA. I'm Navy. I'm involved in Navy League. I'm a combat veteran. I'm involved in VFW. I think these things are so important. Well, a perfect example is our current chapter president is a young lady named Patty McCoy, who is an Air Force officer, retired Air Force officer. I've got a female Air Force officer commanding the Army Association chapter. Drives the Air Force Association nuts, but it's like <laughs> she saw what we did, and she liked what we were doing, and Started small, you know, got on the board, did some things, volunteered at the golf tournaments and that. And then when it was time, is that of interest? She thought it is. So regardless of whether you served or not, um, we are showing our young professionals a way to enhance their business skills. In fact, the example I use for that 
that young person that is starting to grow their business is let me show you a way for you to increase your business uh, talking about military solutions to your client base. And uh, we, if I use my R Community Salutes event is a perfect example. If I'm selling something and I'm going to go after a prospect, don't come in as widget salesman selling your product. Come in and talk to them about R Community Salutes, DFW, and see if they have any interest. Historically, at the end of that talk, 10, 15-minute talk, they always ask, well, what are you doing in real life? Well, I sell a widget. Oh, hey, we buy those types of widgets. And you are talking normally to a C-level executive, the CEO, the COO, the CFO, somebody at some level who is going to make that buying decision. So now they like you because you're telling them, hey, do, we do a thank you event for high school graduating seizures who are enlisted in the service. I like that. We want to participate in that. But let me introduce you to our buying guy, Fred, who buys widgets. So when the CEO of a company called Fred, Fred takes that call. And then you get in higher and quicker to close your sales. So that's that's one of the training things we help our young professionals is if you're doing a sales, come in as a USA. Come in as a Navy. <clears throat> That that makes all the difference in the world. Well, I tell you what, we got to take a commercial break. We're going to be back in just a second to wrap this up. You're listening to Alliance for the Brave, and this is Jim Blythe. My beautiful wife, Diane, is doing Facebook. Stay with us on Facebook. Stay with us. This is Alliance for the Brave. Hi, Jim Blythe, host of Alliance for the Brave. I just found a modern medical miracle, a revolutionary machine that transmits light energy into the body to improve healing. It's an FDA-approved, patented, non-contact process that can help heal deep tissue injuries. It can increase blood flow, cell regeneration, and acts as an anti-inflammatory. I have seen it heal serious injuries as well as COPD and other medical issues caused by inflammation. Take a look at Phoenix Thera dash lays.com the kansas city chiefs and other pro teams are using it because it works phoenix or call 469-567-3959 469-567-3959 check online for a clinic nearest you phoenix lays lase.com or call 469-567-3959 phoenix this is Jim Blight, Certified Senior Advisor, and I help seniors with reverse mortgage lending and retirement strategic planning. I'm one of the nation's largest and best mortgage companies, Fairway Independent Mortgage. Would you like to hear all the facts and know how to build a better retirement? Then please contact me through allianceforthebrave.com or call me at 214-502-4600. Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, NMLS number 2289, is an equal housing opportunity lender. Fairway is not affiliated with any government agencies. These materials we provide are not from HUD or FHA and are not approved by HUD or any government agency. This is not an offer to enter into an agreement and not all customers were qualified. The information, rates, programs are all subject to change without notice. All products are subject to credit and property approval. My MLS number is 311-548, branch address 375 Cedar Sage Drive, Suite 250 Garland, Texas. You're listening to Alliance for the Brave, honoring, serving, and empowering those who serve our great country in the line of duty. Today's program is presented by Gear Services Web Design. Learn more about our mission and how you can plug in with us at allianceforthebrave.com. Now, back to the conversation. Well, welcome back. This is Jim Blythe, U.S. Navy veteran, <clears throat> Navy League Board, AUSA, VFW. I'm plugged in. We want you to plug in. If you'd like to have me come talk or Richard Cannis come talk about our community salutes and how it's helping young men and women, man, just contact me through Alliance for the Brave. I think it's important. Richard, thank you so much for being on board with me today. Richard, you're welcome. 
of all the people I know, if I had a young man or woman that was vacillating but thinking about the military or really needing to be in the military, I'd send them to you. And what would you say to them about your 30-plus year career in the military? Well, I, you know, normally what I tell them is this isn't for everybody. So, mm-hmm. But there are over 125 career paths within the, the military. You want to be a nurse? You want to be a physician's assistant? You want to be an infantryman? You bet. But electrician, heavy equipment, operator, truck driver, what? there are 125-plus career paths that the military will pay to train you. And if it's not right, and the vast majority of people who enlist, if they do their tour because their goal is the GI Bill, to then go to college and get their higher education. But it is, it, you know, who else? pays for your education. Most companies don't. And you learn skill sets of just simple things of show up on time, do your job. You are an exception to your counterparts out in the civilian operation in life. Mm -hmm. It is the correct decision. It it is a career decision. And it is, uh, a, the, it is not the second choice. This is a primary choice. And it can be the right way for it. Most people don't stay as a career, but those who do, it's it's rich. It was it was a life changing event for me. And all the things you talk about, leadership, getting involved, all of that was important. You know what were the most important thing I think I took out of the Navy? That's that I had no limitations that I could do things I never dreamed of being able to do, that I could be a conqueror. I could be someone who went out there and got the job done because I had a great team with me. There is an attitude that goes along with being a team player in the military that gives you a huge, huge leg up. And I think it's important. Well, Rich, Absolutely. again, let's talk about you can go to AUSA Audie Murphy chapter, but I want you to go to www.ocsdfw.org. DFWTX. DFWTX.org. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, we're going to put it, it's been on Facebook. It's one of those mornings. I got to <laughs> say, thank you, Rich, and let's close with a prayer. Lord God, we thank you so much for Mitch, men like Richard Canis and J.P. Hogan and so many, many more who have taken their leadership skills and brought it into the community to enrich. God, thank you for them. Protect them. Guide them so that we may have the benefits of their leadership and their knowledge. Lord, protect our active duty military as they go about protecting us, as they go about being the greatest people in our nation because they said yes when the nation called. So, Lord God, thank you. Thank you for our first responders. Protect them. This we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Rich, this is always a blast having you on Alliance for the Brave. This is really great. Let's get together. And matter of fact, I'll buy you breakfast this morning if you'll meet me. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. It's Everybody all have good. Everybody a safe weekend. Go Army, beat Navy, and let's have a fun game. So, you bet. It's going to be a great game. Rich, thank you for being on board. And thank you for being on board with Alliance for the Brave. We want to say thank you. If you want to get a hold of us, go to allianceforthebrave.com. I want to say a special thank you to Chris uh, O'Sullivan, my engineer, Robin Valtudo, executive director, team Fred in Norfolk, the Masons of Toya in London here in Dallas, Chuck Wright, who has been helping us out. Lord God, thank you for all these people that participate, and you send us a note to participate in Alliance for the Brave. Thank you, and we'll see you next weekend.